and a Merry Christmas from Man Caves and Margaritas. I'm proud to say that for our final episode of the year, we are joined by a girl. <laughs> Welcome, Claire. When do I get paid? Um, <laughs> not what do you mean? You said I'd get paid. Later. Uh, no, we're not paying her, honestly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real girl in real life that, not we're, that we're not paying. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, before we do anything, it is tradition for me to give Dwiz his Christmas present, since it's our second one. So, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to Dwiz all. Thanks. I did get a Christmas present last year. Do I? Yeah. Did you I did? give you one last year? That what a Christmas present. <laughs> oh, really? Wait, I've got, I've got a Christmas present for you. Have you? Yeah. Are you going to pinch my ear or something? No, well, I'd have to go and get it. Are you going to punch me in the face? It's yeah. hit mum. <laughs> what then? It's Richard Reynolds. <laughs> Yay! That is cute. I've had him um, killed and put in plastic um, and fixed in plastic. If anyone doesn't know, we all did a, a, a film based on Hitman, a short film that's on YouTube. I'll link it in the comments. It's very good. Thank you very much, Gavin. Merry Christmas, mate. Um, have a good year of films with you this year. <laughs> that's a funny Thank expression, you. that. <laughs> you need a little shelf behind you with all your... Yeah. Toys on. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so, what have we been watching today then? Right, well, to give the audience a little time to try and guess it themselves before I give the full answer, the clues that you guys got were, it's a remake, the original starred Gene Hackman, uh, the new version's got Kurt Russell on it, it's on a ship, and the final clue was, it's the name of the Greek god of the sea. And Richard Draper said he only did it for the money. That's what the film's called. Richard Dreyfus only did it for the money. Oh, no. Hang on. What's it called, Drizzle? Poseidon. Yes. So, basically, uh, it's a, it was my choice, and it's a guilt, what I call a guilty pleasure. Because I know when it came out, not a lot of people liked it. But I really liked the original version with Gene Hackman. It was rated that director's worst film. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure you speak up because the microphone's not right. No, it's not that comment. <laughs> she said it was rated that director's worst film. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm quite excited to get everybody's comments. Who actually. was the director? Wolfgang Peterson. Mm. Who, oh gosh, did he, don't tell me he did Das, did he do Das Boot? Das Boot? I don't know, to be honest. Wolfgang Peterson, Das Boot. That it's old German film on the submarine. Oh, it's a great would film. Make, it would make sense because that's all water-based as well, isn't well, it? Well, who knows? I don't know. So basically then, so back in the 70s, there was this spate where there was like a lot of disaster films made, um, uh, of which I was I was brought up on because they would always get shown at bank holidays and Christmas. Um, and my favourite ones of those, of that ill, my two favourite ones, well, three favourite ones of that ill car, Earthquake with Charlton Heston. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> the Towering Inferno. Yeah, I've seen Paul Newman. Oh. Right. And I've got a trivia. Go on. And you know that bottle of wine that they ordered that was like a five thousand dollar bottle of wine. It was yeah. the same one from Towering Inferno. Are you serious? Mm. Uh, are you serious? Yeah. That's an amazing fact. When How I, do you know that? I looked at on IMDb trivia a minute ago. Did you really? Yeah. Are you Are you serious? Because yeah. if you're serious, that's an absolutely brilliant fact. True. What's the wine called again? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Was so. it 1968? 88? <laughs> was it 1988? Yeah. No. I think she wants me to look at the wine. Yeah. yeah. He said it was in 1988 when Dreyfus yeah, uh, yeah. ordered it. I can't remember what it's called. So basically, um, the, there was a third film on that list, which was The Poseidon Adventure, and that was Gene Hackman. Um, and that is a, that's a film that I always used to watch, Boxing Days or Christmas and stuff like that. And this was a remake, starring, of course... Richard Dreyfus And the legendary... Kurt Russell. Josh Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely loving this. This is the best thing ever. So, okay, I've seen it, I like it. Guilty pleasure, which means he might not like it, which is fine, it's fine. So let's go, let's start with, let's start with our guests. Girl, 
My name's Claire. Girl. Claire. Let me speak up. Woman. Hello. Uh, have I got to mark it out of ten or just say Not that yet. Would you it? say that to the end? Um, so what did you think? I liked it. You did? Yeah. I like a disaster movie. Well, she's watching. I don't know. I was going to say. I like a disaster movie. I was going to say you should watch that zombie one that we all made. That was, that was a bit of a disaster, was a disaster, wasn't it? The whole thing was a disaster. Uh, anyway, carry on, sorry. Apart from the fact that it was mainly underwater and there was lots of tiny spaces, apart from that, yeah, it was good. You didn't like the claustrophobia mm -hmm. aspect of it. No. You were saying earlier that you okay. really can't watch films like The Descent, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Or, I, or anything on a cruise ship. Oh, never. We'll never go on a cruise ship. It was a bit... Anything um, to do with water, being claustrophobic. Yeah, there was... A, and in a boat. You don't like... Well... It's like, to here's, say, here's Poseidon Adventure. To say that I was just going to watch it for a bit and then go away. Stay I stayed for the, the whole, whole thing, film. So. I'm so impressed. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, maybe we should show Claire Deep Rising next. Deep Rising? Yeah, on the cruise ship with the monster probably like that actually because it's really bloody and, and whatever but it is on water and in the yeah so give the give the guys and girls out there an idea of um what the film was about then. okay so it's new year's eve mm. there's loads of rich people mainly white <laughs> on a boat three <laughs> women who look the same with the same hair yes same clothing same builds, same faces, but one's got a son, one's got a dad. They try to make their way out of the ship instead of doing what they're told by the captain, Captain Holt. Rest um, in peace. Rest in yes, peace. I know. He's the best one from Brooklyn. Right I know. Now. And I would do what he said. I'm, 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 I'm Even if I died. Yeah. Um, and then Kurt Russell died, so. Spoiler. 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 Um, and then they all have to go through different escape room scenarios until they get <laughs> out into a conveniently located dinghy waiting for them. And Brilliant. then they shoot a flare into the air, which turns into two helicopters. Nice transition. And it was. Right. And then they all survived, well, that, apart from one of the women. That's the whole plot. So that's the whole film. Yeah, actually. If you haven't that's seen it, so you ask me really what good. <laughs> What is the <laughs> right? So, so go back to the beginning bit a little bit. Yeah. So, massive, massive ship, mm. and what happens to the ship, which makes turns into a disaster film. Oh, um, it was struck by a rogue wave, which was a big tidal wave that hit it. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it's based on a novel that was inspired by the author, who actually was on a ship that was struck by a rogue wave. What's did you what? look at that? Did you look that up on that? I know YouTube? stuff. Girls can know stuff. <laughs> Well, it's a yeah. so a rogue wave is that a real thing? I thought yeah. they would just make it up. A name. I thought it was like a tsunami yeah. out in the middle of the sea from an earthquake or something that would cause something like that. Yeah, but yeah. no, it's a rogue wave. A rogue wave. It was very high, wasn't it? Yeah, which I think is just when it's a wave and then over time it dissipates. So it oh, doesn't reach. So it doesn't reach that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. I like that. Okay, and what did it cause the ship to do? Fall over and die. Pretty much, yeah, it rolled over, didn't it? Upside, so they're now in an upside down ship. Capsized. Capsized, and an, a, an ocean cruiser, an ocean liner, massive, and they've got to try and get from what was the top floor, which is now the bottom floor, and they've got to work their way through the ship to the hull to escape, hence the, the disaster. And during a period of time during the film, they slowly die, don't they? Yeah, one, one by one. one. Sometimes you can't tell which one because they always. The I think the thing, thing to point out is this is a massive cruise liner. It's not just like a boat. It has lifts, and it, yeah. It's like, it's like thousands of people on it. And um, yeah, they pretty much all get wiped out in the first 10, 15 minutes. Apart from seven of them, eight, eight of them. Mm. Yeah, and, and that's very much like it's the same as the original film as well. You have one or two of them that think that instead of staying where they are in the, in the big. Um, area where the big party was that they should try and get to the the hull of the boat. There wasn't a priest out. in this one. Though. No priest. That was Gene Hackman. Really yeah, good. What's going on? I'm loving this. You said you'd if, um, it. If in the, you were wondering if it is a big actual massive cruise liner or not. 
you do spend the first five minutes of the oh, film with yeah. like an elongated shot of the boat spin going round the boat revealing just how big it is and if you mm. aren't quite aware just how big it is Ish. there's another minute of it yeah. just going around it, wasn't it emmy nominated no Oscar nominated <laughs> for that, the best cgi so, that's titanic it was but I get it, Oscar nominated <laughs> you got that out. have you really just go what upstairs you, you mean now i'm defeated all these facts because well, this a, is amazing. In 2010, player. it was the most detailed CGI ship that had ever been done. This is more, you have revealed more about this film than we have about all the films in the I year. Know. Of I, don't know, I don't know any of these Wait, facts. This I is amazing. I thought this was a film podcast. Yeah, well. No, it's just about two mates like watching a film and talking about whether they might it or not. <laughs> I love it though. Keep going. This is really oh. good. Well, do you know what would have helped? Well, I think. Yeah. All those women that look the same, yeah. if one had looked slightly different, like Lindsay Lohan was up for playing one of them and then turned it down. No, I don't think I'd want to have seen Lindsay Lohan. Well, at least she's ginger and I would. Oh, you think maybe like, put a, a, women with different hairing would have helped? It helps me. How did you know Lindsay Lohan was a um, popular role? I thought everyone knew that. Well, that is one thing about the film is all the women in it, they do, like Claire started off saying, Oh, you know, one thing I really hate is how all the women look the same in these type of films, and I just ignored her. And then within 10 minutes, I didn't know which one was which, because yeah, they, they literally do all look the same. So much so, that when one of them died, I thought it was the other one. Really? Gavin said he could tell them apart because they've got different size boobs. He That's said true. She could have boobs. That's how we decided that it was okay. Is that how they got cast, is it? I don't think that was how the cast But that only went. works comparatively if they're standing next to somebody else. No, I'm try I'm generally quite good at spotting different women. I'm not necessarily gonna say on boob size, but thanks for that. No, it's however, good. however, because one of them is quite young, wasn't she a teenager, one of them was a mother, and one of them was like Hispanic type, wasn't she? So that kind of worked for not me. Not to me, <laughs> very much. You just they just had to say and that back but hair. it was all in like the dark. With flashing lights That's and stuff, true. it was hard to tell. They all have the same. Anyway, let's get off. I tell you something. I've got to go back to the, this. Is an important serious point actually. And Claire made it and sort of said it with a smile. But I didn't realise that film's very whitewashed, isn't it? Yeah, there's only Captain Holt. Yeah, it? I know, and that is true. It's true. Mm. How many people are supposed to be on that ship? Mm. But they were all rich, so and just one person was black, and that's the captain. Thousands, yeah. And he didn't get. He wasn't given the chance to. No. He's carried a Do kibush, right? So, so look, um, Claire, what, how did you find the pacing of the film? Uh, I learnt a good phrase at Mayhem. It didn't outstay its welcome. Nice. Oh. There was one point where I was a little bit bored when it was like, oh, now they've got another peril to overcome. Yeah, I was feeling that as well. And I thought... One thing, did obvious, nice, yeah. one thing that was obvious that you didn't like was when there was peril involved, you didn't like the fact that they would stop and have chats. Oh, oh it annoys me so much. Getting on with it. Especially when that one of the uh, dark haired women, what's, what's his face? Josh Lucas. No, older face. Richard Dreyfus. No, young, slightly younger. Kurt Russell? Yes, thank you. <laughs> hey, bet that wasn't IMDb, was it? When he, his daughter, when he, his, Chris, the fiancé, well was like, I'm going to go, tell me you love me, I can't go if you don't. She was like, just crying. Yeah. Slap. Really? Oh. What, who, you just slapped her or he should, or she him. should have slapped them? Uh, or you her, wanted to slap her. them all? Uh, well, I suppose stop it. Stop dilly dallying, just get on with it. But it gave it's the gross. father a chance to be brave and disappear while they had their died. backs. Well, yeah, he did die. And that was a shocker for you, wasn't it, Dwiz? Yeah, I just assumed I had uh, some inclination of who would survive and who wouldn't mm. based on how famous they are and whether they'd be the lead name on the poster, you know. So there are quite, quite a couple of little moments where you're like, you are genuinely like, oh, didn't expect that character to actually bite the dust there, mm. you know? That, what What about, I mean, well, I, I know there's a lot of green screen, obviously, for that sort of thing. Nearly but won an Oscar. Nearly won an Oscar for, for the special effects. Mm. I forgot about that, thanks Claire. 
And what about um, the actual sets though? Because like when they did the set where everything was upside down in the um, dining, in the dining room. room, the ballroom. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I'd have liked to have actually have seen a set like that. Probably. With the big chandeliers. The, yeah, yeah, the, uh, and the piano attached to the ceiling and with the board, you know, all that, all those sort of things. Because those are the sort of things I remember quite nicely from the original Poseidon. Because obviously um, no CGI in that. So is it the same story? Is yeah. It? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. There's a couple of little tiny changes, but you know, ultimately Gene Hackman sacrifices himself at the end of the movie to save everybody, but he does it in a different way. He has to there's a there's a there's a valve that has to be opened which will shut off a load of fire um, so they can finally escape. It's literally the last door to go through, which is why it's a little bit more heartbreaking. Gene Hackman um has to jump over a gap, grab this superheated valve turn it turn it enough to switch the fire off and then the only thing you can do after that is then just let go and he just drops into a load of fire and stuff and then they escape so he it's literally manages to sacrifice yeah and it's a little right at the end so it's really quite sad but yeah there's the there's the little boy um you've got shelly winters in there um uh, i mean this one to be a little bit more modern and up with the times you've got a bit more pc with the fact that you've got richard dreyfus who's an older gay man uh, did that's you, not in the original did you notice quite what, what year what year yeah exactly it? what 2010 yeah i thought yeah. i thought in fact it was 30, yeah i was not about 13 years old then there were some aspects of it that i thought were a bit old-fashioned even even for that it, it did, did seem it, a bit 90s, didn't it? It did seem very 90s. I agree with that, actually. Yeah, it, there's a 90s feel to it, isn't there? The style of acting, the, the framing, the makeup, the, um, the light, yeah. But um, I'd like to go back to what, what you were saying before. The thing that I personally was most impressed once with was the set design. And it was absolutely incredible. You think like the film's like one hour 40 or whatever. So you had to have one hour 40 minutes worth of sets of the interior of a of a cruise ship that's been completely destroyed with all water flowing through it and, mm. and obstacles like yeah. floating around everywhere bits coming out of pipes um lights like flicking on off and mm. on mm. and it was epic and there wasn't like they didn't keep it to just small little hallways mm. there, there was big wides of massive parts of the ship there was also quite a lot of underwater film work where the actors themselves are having to do a lot of underwater filming, and, and that's a lot scary. Of the, I mean, a that's... lot of the um, <laughs> cast actually got really ill because they. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. They all got ill from being in dirty water for so long. <laughs> they all got infected. <laughs> well. What they did. Oh, I don't understand. Claire, you're so good. You're magic. Do you not do I love research? you, Claire. No, we don't research. Brilliant. Really. We don't even brilliant, look at brilliant research. Research. We don't even look at what the <laughs> year is released. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get in the box and go like that. But it's it's so cool. Though, That's like, amazing. It's That's so cool. Well. Stuff. It's like, I love that. So they got dirty, you? Wa dirty water poisoning. Yeah. I mean, that was a bit ill. Infections, yeah. Infections, yeah. yeah. Wow. That wouldn't happen these days. Well, you know, no. I mean, think Quite of other films. You've got a COVID champion, don't you? Think of other films where they've done lots of underwater filming and you know how difficult it is. Think of films like The Abyss, uh, Deep Blue Sea. Titanic, <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. Great well, film. they did do. <laughs> great yeah, film. Great film. Samuel L. Jackson's death, amazing. ML <laughs> Cool J. Underwater. Underwater. That's quite a good film, though. Oh, Underwater's I love it. great. Underwater's brilliant. You should watch that for one of the episodes. Underwater. Underwater's brilliant. And that, that got really slated as well. Yeah, that's yeah. quite recent. Water World. I quite like Waterworld, you know. Yeah, I've seen it. Mad yeah, Max. I didn't like Mad it. Mad Max on Water, basically, with Kevin Costner mm. in the role. I mean, it, yeah, it's just... Yeah, let's not get on to other films, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what did you so think the of the acting in this one? Oh. Uh, do you know what? I didn't notice at any point that anyone was doing any bad acting, so that means That's I'm good. I thought you were about to say you didn't notice anybody acting. <laughs> I, I, was to laugh. I was going to get ready to laugh. Very sunny acting. Considering I've never heard of it, I was surprised at the overall level of uh, competency. Yeah, it's in good, the acting, right? the script, the cinematography, the editing, it was all of, of quite a, an impressive level. Though, there wasn't a single bit of originality in the whole film, which is mm. probably what holds it back. Yeah, but complete. I mean, when we say it's a remake, it, yeah, I mean, the original film was from a book, 
So all they've done really is just follow the same formula, but mm. give it a modern day take on it. But also they did get straight into it. They didn't mess around. Like, they, with did. Backstory they did. They did actually. Things. Yeah, right. that was impressive, wasn't it? And here's the thing. Uh, here's a question then, because we, uh, Driz and I, our last film we watched was the Andromeda Strain. And uh, we were talking about that one, about how there's a little bit of time spent developing characters first before mm. going into whereas with modern films they don't tend to do that that's a good example of that as a result of that did you care about the characters that were dying no. much no. no and that's the difference isn't some it? of them i wanted to die yeah well yeah i mean kevin dillon oh who's that he was the one that had the big part the engine part of the ship come through the ceiling matt just, dillon no kevin matt dillon's his brother no yeah 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 Oh, I thought it just looked weird. Yeah, it? no, no, that's... Ke so, Kevin Dillon and Matt Dillon. Kevin Dillon is the... Uh, it, he's Dillon. the brother, and he's in Entourage. Um, oh. And he's... He, he... Kevin... D oh, I think Kevin Dillon... A young Kevin Dillon is the Dillon brother that's in the remake of The Blob. Is I just that? thought sometimes Matt Dillon looked weird. Did you think Matt Dillon sometimes had a tash? Yeah. It, honestly? Yeah. There you go, something new. Is one of them in Something About Mary? Yeah, that's Matt Dillon. With a tash? Po possibly, yeah. Kevin, it's yeah. the same person. It's not, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, not, it's two separate characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's talk about uh, the use of lighting. Because again, Dwish, you know, he's ever so good. He gets me thinking and looking at a lot more things now when it comes well, to a films. Lot, I thought a lot of people were CGI'd in the beginning because they were lit weird. Um, this no, it's had a weird effect, didn't it? You know yeah. what? It's, yeah. it's always hard. So it's a film that's like, so you brought your DVD around. Yeah. So it's HD. Yeah. And I've put it in my PS5, which is 4K, and it upscales it onto my uh, 4K TV. And sometimes it's hard to tell what the original, even what, what your DVD actually looks like in reality. Because by the time it's been upscaled and stuff, you don't know what you're looking at. Right, because it's changed the original look of how it should have looked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes when you upscale stuff, there's, there's some artefacts of, of that process and things. So even though, yeah, what the version we were watching, they looked kind of quite plasticky, didn't they? Yeah, you were. I mean, I hadn't really sweaty. I thought sweaty, mm. just yeah, a little bit false, slimy. Yeah, just a little bit false, <laughs> slimy. Well, there was that bit, wasn't there, where they came in on the main actors when they were playing the poker. Yeah, game. Everybody looks CGI. And you said, God, they all look CGI, and it did. It looked weird, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't work out. It seemed to me obvious that some of it was green screen, but then it might not have been. It might have been just a artifact of of. Um, it not being released on 4K, oh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. It is hard to say. Yeah. Um, so I guess they obviously had a massive budget and an amazing oh, sets. Yeah, yeah. And the lighting was awesome. So there's. No I mean, when they combined any CGI with the set work, when we, it was done really well, I thought the actual combination of the two is quite pretty seamless. And as far as you know, film that's now nearly 15, well, 14 years old. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess. But. But uh, yeah, you you're right though. I'd not really thought about. It. I was always looking at the main actors predominantly, so it never really saw. Us. And it wasn't until they started playing that card game, and then you said it. I thought, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. They do look a little bit as though they're all sat, and it's the whole thing behind them. It's like a dream. maybe it was. Yeah. My you know? favorite bit of acting was when um, Kurt Russell. Go on. Remember his name? Well, I'm... um, was drowning, and he did that like. Yeah. Which you, that happens. Yeah, that, spasms. Is that what actually happens? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, when I've drowned people. When I've um, <laughs> Really? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I've heard, yeah. Yeah, you've heard that, yeah. They do that, yeah. Mm, yeah, because um, I never... Uh, I've never seen anybody drown in that manner before on the screen. No, have you not? No. But when Normally, you, they, you not, they don't do that. You, yeah, exactly. I haven't seen it on screen. It's too realistic. Exactly, because it makes it look... So, it makes it... When I... I won't lie, when I first saw him die, the very first time I saw that film, I would say at the end, that was the only bit of the film that I thought, oh, that was a little bit OTT. But then the more I've watched it, the more I think, well, oh, it's horrible, actually. Death. 
Yeah, yeah. No, that's, and that's then the more I watch it, it's like, yeah. oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever tried to hold your breath for a really long time? While we were watching it, any bits where they had to swim <laughs> underwater, Gavin held his breath to see if he, <laughs> if he would die or survive. And sometimes he was like, yeah, I could do that. I sometimes he was like, no, I died 20 I died seconds then. ago. <laughs> yeah. But if you hold your breath for ages, you do start going... Because you, you you don't want to have to, and I suppose you're depleting yeah. air, uh, air and whatever to your it blood, to your brain. Like and, yeah, well, that's horrible then. Yeah. It's not peaceful then. And people always go, oh, it's a really I peaceful way to die. Say that. I don't think there's any way to die is particularly peaceful unless I'm blind. Apart from the DMT hit you get. What's DMT hit? Oh. Let's not go. We'll talk about that. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So, Kurt, I mean, Kurt Russell's is a, he's a good actor, though, isn't he? We love Kurt Russell, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, favourite Kurt Russell film. Are we talking Kurt Russell? I know it's off the subject. I know lots. I like. You lots got to pick one Kurt though. Russell. Well, I like. Oh, I can only pick one. Go on then. The thing. You're you're, you're going to go for the thing, yeah? Oh, great, great, cool, yeah. McCready, what are you going to go I for? I don't remember stuff. I don't know any Kurt Russell things. You do. You know. You I, loads like, of I do Kurt like Russell the thing. Films. Um. Early Kurt Russell. Late. Oh probably. wait. Oh, bored. Okay. Yeah. Comedy. Yeah, That's okay. Do you like him in that? Great film. That's your favourite Kurt Russell film? Well, I can't think of any others. That's um, the first one I thought of. I <laughs> like, I thing. love him in The Thing. Yeah, great. I think he's brilliant in The Thing. That is one of my favourite films anyway. So, although The Thing is a favourite film of mine, this next film's also a favourite, but not, not quite as high as The Thing overboard. on my scale. Not overboard, sadly, no. I know what you're going to say. Escape from New York. New York. Yeah. Uh, Snake Plissken. I love him. I love yeah. him with Snake Plissken. You've seen that. No. Yeah. Um, is he in a Christmas Santa film? He's, yeah, he's, he's one of the best Christmas Christmases. Christmas Chronicles? Christmas Chronicles, yeah. With Goldie Horn. With Goldie Horn. Overboard. There you go. That's how they met as well. They met on Overboard, didn't they? Wait, they're they got married. married. Yeah. They met on the film Overboard. Aww. And they've been long-term married. Aww. And then she turned up to be Mrs. Claus at the end of the that's, Christmas. Yeah. Cute. Amazing, amazing. Cute. Right, so we need to um, talk, before we talk about um, scores and things like that, there's one more thing we need to talk about. We like to talk about the score, the music, and how it's been used and things like that. So, subtle score, really. You didn't, didn't notice it. Exactly. Didn't get in the way of the film, did it? No, there was a, there was a lot of uh, special I mean, sound effects, you know, clanging metals and fuses and, yeah, and stuff going on. Yeah, it wasn't really appropriate because it was underwater. I was like that. Oh yeah, when that beam went smashing through, you wouldn't hear that, would you? No. Mm. Lots of it, I thought that was silly. You know, I didn't, I didn't actually pick up on... I quite often notice a lot to do with the audio. Yeah. Like, but it, it kind of went over my head on this. I, I was kind of so taken in by the set design and everything mm. that I didn't even notice. Oh uh, yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, well that's good. I mean, yeah, okay. So we could say that it's a very subtle score that was just there as in the background to, to service. How long was service. it, do you know? Um, what do you reckon that was? Hour 40? It felt an hour it 40. It did, didn't it? I think you can tell when a film isn't boring and it's paced well because you don't notice things like the score, mm. the hair and makeup. Like if I'm bored in a film, I'll start looking at hair and makeup and costumes and True. stuff, and I didn't. Because mm. you, like, you, you like to talk a little bit if you notice stuff in the editing, don't you? Um, what on these yeah, on charts? These, yeah, yeah, yeah. How things? How? I mean, it, it wasn't far because sometimes that you can edit stuff so fast it's ridiculous, isn't it? When it's an action film as well. Mm -hmm. But they weren't on the big set pieces. They were. They obviously were really confident about their sets, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Because they were doing lots of big wides mm -hmm. on some of the big stuff that was happening, which which yeah was. There's, only, there's actually only one. Um, exterior shot that was actually shot in real life or really? CGI, yeah. Really? The bit at the Which beginning was that? where um, that, I don't know his character name is running. Josh Lucas. Josh Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only real one. Everything else was CGI. Yeah, because they pan around mm. and they have to make it real when they pan, they close in on him, don't they? Incredible. That's amazing. You're so full of facts. Mm. I mean, it takes one minute, Gavin. That's amazing. I read, I read IMDb for one minute. Wow. So let's let's talk about. Let's give it my. 
Now, if this is the last film of the year, so are you prepared to mark it, Dwiz, or what are you going no, to do? No, I don't, I don't do? personally mark, but no. Um, it's not your scene, I'm, that. No. Because, like, Gavin does an out of I like ten. to mark. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like judging ten. as well. Do you? Yeah. Are you I, mark? I tend to be like, would I, would I recommend it my friends? And, hmm. and to be honest, probably not, because mm -hmm. I, I just can't imagine any of my friends watching their kind of mid like you, you've got bad, you've got good, and it, it's very mid, and I, and it's very standard in a way. It's not a classic, is it? No, not. But no, no, it no. definitely isn't a film that you would say, "Oh, this film's a classic." Yeah. Which is probably why it feels like it's a guilty. I find pleasure. it very hard to to recommend it a friend thinking they might actually watch it and come back and say, "Can I have my hour and a half back, please?" <laughs> but I personally loved it. You did. I I really enjoyed it personally. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd only I'd only recommend it if you fancy a kind of turn your brain off Sunday afternoon yeah. mm. disaster movie. Yeah, exactly what. Yeah. Then it then it's great. I think you. Probably, but you have to be in the mood for that. I think you probably hit the nail right on the head there with that. It is like a family a family kind of classic film. I'd have watched that with my dad. Yeah, yeah. He there's like no. That. Was there swearing in it? No. And although there were lots of deaths in it, there was it wasn't bloody or anything, was there? It wasn't gory. Was no, it? there was only one bit of blood where one of those women, we don't know which one, <laughs> smacked her head. Oh, that's stuff. it on the concrete thing, and it just yeah, and the then water, Kurt, didn't it? Kurt Russell's violent drowning. Yeah, which is still very horrible. It's my favourite part. I know yeah. it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. No one would ever know that that would be your favourite part yeah. dressed all in black. Would you recommend um, it? Or yeah, so let's squat out ten first. Oh no, go on. What do you, you said, would you recommend it? Go on. Uh, to, it depends on to who. Mm. No. Uh, fair comment. Probably not. Out of ten? Three. Three out of ten? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So, but you scoring it, you enjoyed it, but you think it's only a three out of ten? Yeah, but. So, what? It's that thing, isn't it? Many yeah. films in the world. Mm. Mm. There's a lot more I'd rank to watch above that one. She said rank there, by the way. What about yourself? Um, <laughs> Bad Santa. <laughs> um, Bad Santa too. <laughs> Great Christmas song. I think, I think I would rate it. Well, I chose it because it's a guilty pleasure, so you already know I like it. I wondered why you called it a guilty pleasure. Okay. Now I understand. You get it? Mm. So I know it's not a film that a lot of people would really like, but go on. Surprised you've watched it more than once, though. Yeah, I don't watch it regularly. Do you get anything from it the second yeah, time? Yeah, I like it. Time? No, no, I like it because it's the sort of film that I know if I put it on, my brain can be left at the side of the room and it can trolley along quite nice because the pacing's great. Mm -hmm. I love the little set pieces. I really like Kurt Russell and, and, and I really love the original with Gene Hackman. What? So would you not watch that? Would you watch that one above this one? Uh, I've watched them both. I've watched. I've rated them both the same. Right. Wow. Well, I'm talking about enjoyment factor. You right. see, so there's things in there that I know aren't brilliant, and there are seat. There are certain things in there that I know not everyone's going to think is great, and I know for a fact a lot of my friends would watch that and go, "What have you recommended that for?" Mm. Which is exactly why you it's won't a guilt. Recommend it. <laughs> That's what, yeah, exactly. He won't recommend it. No. But I also thought, and again, this is important for me, when choosing a film for what we do here, I always try, if I can, to introduce Dwiz to something new. You're 13 years old. What? Well, it's not new, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, not new a new to film, me. but uh, yes, um, yeah, sorry, not a new film, but yeah, a film that's... that's what's your um, jumper, by the way? Oh, um, I find um, your lack of cheer... What does it say? Disturbing. Yeah, Darth, so Darth Darth Vader. you should do it properly. You, can you do a Darth Vader? We can close on this. Wait, is this... Oh, hold on, Mark's out of ten. Oh, I said, oh yeah, well, for me, that's a seven out of ten, but it's a guilty pleasure seven out of okay. ten. Okay. Yeah? Now, three, two, one. I find your lack of cheer disturbing. Not bad. I'd rate that, that I'd rate that four out of ten. Okay. Uh, Darth Vader impression. I find your no. lack of cheer disturbing. <laughs> no? I find your jumper disturbing. Okay. <laughs> I'll okay. rate that three so out of ten. I've got one more fact. 
Right, hold on to it. I'm going to do the Darth Vader. I find your lack of cure. Disturbing. That just sounds like you forgot to take your sleep apnea machine off. <clears throat> no, that's right. That's good then. Because that's literally what he's breathing through. Right, go on. Last fact. Finish with a fact. Make it great. Because okay. this is going to be our last fact. There's a blooper. <gasps> what? In the film. There's a part where one of the ladies... Don't know which one they're doing. No, it doesn't matter. They're, they're the same. same. Um, says when Josh... Lucas. Lucas's character is doing something perilous, which is constantly... Constantly. She shouts, no, Josh! <gasps> she says his real name. Whatever his actual name Are you, is. Really? Mm, made it into the film. I need to see that now. I'm going to go on YouTube and see that. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. People, Merry Christmas. We'll see you in 2024. I know. And um, thank you so much for joining us this year. It's been just over a year now, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, this. Thank yeah. Thanks for Claire for joining us, our first guest. Our first guest, I know. High five. Very welcome back. I think we're going yes. to do I Walked Home Alone in the... What? A Girl, a girl Walks home, home Alone, which I've never yeah, seen. Yeah. Yes. Not to be confused with Home Alone. Then. That would be yours. <laughs> and we, we'll be back here for that as well because uh, we should have been at my cinema room for. We'll be at my cinema room, but next yeah. one we're going to be at yours in 2024. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a good one. Peace, guys. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>